If a current flowing through a wire causes a magnetic field, and magnetic fields interact and produce forces, then if we put a piece of wire into a magnetic field and switch on the current, there should be a force on the wire and the wire will move. If I reverse the current, the wire moves the other way. If I reverse the magnetic field, the wire moves the other way again. This is called the motor effect. An electric current in a wire in a magnetic field causes motion. We get the best effect if the wire is perpendicular to the field lines. If the wire is parallel to the field lines, we get no effect. To find the direction the wire will move, we use Fleming's left hand rule. The first finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, north to south. The second finger points in the direction of the current, top to bottom in this case. The thumb represents the motion of the wire, so the thumb points upwards, the wire will move upwards. Let's check. Yes, the wire moves up. Everything is at 90 degrees to everything else, which causes difficulty when drawing it. So to draw it on flat paper, we use a dot to represent something coming towards us, and a cross to represent something moving away from us. If this was current in a wire, it would be coming towards us. We could draw the field lines using our right hand grip rule. If this was current in a wire moving away from us, again we could draw the field lines using our right hand grip rule. As another example, this would represent the current flowing left to right in a wire, while the crosses represent an area of magnetic field pointing into the paper away from us. So using our left hand rule, the first finger, which is the field, points into the paper, second finger, the current, points to the right, the thumb, which is the motion of the wire, points up the paper towards the top. So the wire would move that way. The size of the force on the wire, measured in newtons, depends on the magnetic field strength, which is labelled B and is measured in Tesla, capital T, the current in the wire, measured in amps, and the length of the wire in the field, measured in metres. And it turns out that the equation to calculate the force is as simple as that. F equals B times I times L, as long as the wire is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. We could use this formula to find out the strength of the field from a magnet. First we put our magnet on some scales, and we set the scales to zero. Then we connect a wire above the magnet, and we measure the length of the wire that's in the field, 27 millimetres. Then we switch on the current and measure the current, 14.69 amps. And from Newton's third law, if the magnet pushes on the wire, the wire pushes on the magnet. So the magnet appears to be heavier by 3 grams. But 3 grams is 0.003 kilograms, and multiplying by gravity, that gives us an effective weight of 0.03 newtons. So we can rearrange our formula as B is F divided by I times L, which gives me a value for B of 0.076 Tesla. If we put two wires into a magnetic field carrying currents in opposite directions, such as a loop of wire, one side will get pushed up and the other gets pushed down. This can cause the wire to rotate. We can get a bigger effect if we wind the wire into a coil. Effectively, we make an electromagnet where one side becomes north and attracts to south, one side becomes south and attracts to north. So the coil turns. But we still have the problem that it can only turn so far before the wires get tangled up. And even if the wires didn't get tangled up, it would only turn until the north was attracting south and the south was attracting north, and then it would stop. So we need to arrange to reverse the current every half a turn so that the coil keeps on turning. We do this by means of the split ring commutator. The two ends of the wire come out here and turn with the coil and a sliding connection makes the contact. These wires slide across the connection and reverse the connection to the coil every half a turn. So let's switch on and see the effect that has. So that's the principle of the electric motor. Again, we can make it turn faster if we increase the magnetic force, which means increasing the magnetic field strength, increasing the current, or increasing the number of turns of wire. Another use of the motor effect is a loudspeaker. A loudspeaker has a powerful magnet, 
and a coil of wire inside here, which is attached to a cardboard cone. If we pass a varying current through the loudspeaker coil, the coil vibrates in time with the current and it produces a sound. 